X-Men, the animated 90s show, season 5, episodes 7 and 8, thoughts. These episodes are called Old Soldiers and Hidden Agendas. So, spoilers for the show leading up to and including these two episodes and other episodes I absolutely love. Before I dive in, the top link in the description box will allow you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so, it's an extremely important strike. And the, the links below are uh, videos that help explain why it's such an important strike. So, old soldiers. So, this is probably, of all the... Yeah, I believe this is the first time the show actually has a huge chunk of an episode actually be set in the past rather than we're told something happened in the past, we get a brief flashback, and then something happens in the present day. Very little of this episode is present day. And, yeah, we... Straight up this episode, the enemies are the Nazis. So, I don't think they ever actually say the word Nazi in the episode. I think that is probably... You know, for a kid's show, they wouldn't be allowed to. But, yeah, they actually got to the point where they're dealing with actual Nazis, not just implied. You and what army? Oh, yeah, I guess that was a stupid question. And, yeah, Captain America. I was hoping that he would make an appearance on this show since, yeah, in the comics, they're... I'm not sure it was only this once, but there was at least one story in the comics where Wolverine and Captain America work together during World War II. And it's also like, you know, of course they did, like, you know, Wolverine worked with the the Allies during the time, Captain America was active during the time, you know, they, they can both go on these kind of special missions together. Honestly, the fact that we have not had a live-action you know, encounter between the two characters is purely down to rights issues. Like, if not for rights issues, Captain America would have appeared in the opening to X-Men Origins Wolverine when they're storming the beaches of Normandy. You know, Wolverine would have been... would have made at least one appearance in Captain America the First Avenger. And, yeah, so... This is before Logan was given the, the metal skeleton, and in this continuity, he did not have bone claws before that. So, you know, they still want him to have claws, so they give him the external ones, and he does at one point say, these come in real handy. And, you know, he says, you'd never catch me in something like that, referring to Captain America's, you know, what would you prefer, yellow spandex? And the, you know, Captain America explains why he is, you know, wearing the American flag. And Red Skull, as I hoped when I saw Captain America, is indeed the villain and seemingly the professor betrayed them and Wolverine frees them using Cap's shield which was very very cool and yeah so in this version Steve Rogers very easily defeats Red Skull which you know I I like when they're a physical match but I do appreciate if that were the case then why why do you need the robot? You know, no, you need the, you know, the way that the 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 fight is more interesting is because the robot evens things out. And yeah, really love the the fight between you know against the robot, cutting off you know one one of its hands with the shield, the other with the Wolverine does with the claws. And, you know, he opens the front of it, Steve th throws the shield all the way, you know, it goes through the, the entire body, and then, like, green goo, you know, leaks out of the various holes, really, really, just absolutely love all these, these great details. 
and they do actually try to to stop the jet climbing aboard it but ultimately they fall off and I did not catch her name but Cocteau's daughter reveals you know you didn't know the whole story he was a double agent and you know Logan goes up and writes hero with his claws or the one claw rather and I do appreciate they did actually if, if I recall we only see one claw extend not all three because then you can't you know you, you need just the one to write hero and you know they go to have a toast about her heroic father so yeah that's that's two out of I don't know ten solo stories with Logan that actually end happy that's an exaggeration I don't I'm not sure there's quite ten but the rest of them do end unhappily and episode eight hidden agenda so yeah, this is a very Cannonball-centric episode. Quite appreciate that. And... I, were those supposed to be the actual U.S. military? Because they certainly... They seem like it... Anyway, but but yeah. Um, it's too bad that the, the show... Like, there's only two more episodes. So obviously, the... Like, it would have been very cool if they actually did fight this military force a bunch more they say at the end of the episode you know defeating the X-Men has become our number one priority and yeah so Rogue leaves to to help Cannonball including taking a vacation from Gambit and yeah you know one of the uh, one of the ways that the the military ruin it for for cannonball and his family the the guthries is by claiming that it was radio you know that they're like radioactive they're they're dangerous to be near you know which reminds me of like the aids scare you know the yeah a number of people thought that you could be hurt by being near them by by touching them and that's just not true. And this is sadly something that Reagan, he was happy to spread that misinformation while, you know, the, the late great Princess Diana actually fought back against that. And... I appreciate the detail that, like, so the militaries try to manipulate adults who are living in this you know small town by saying you know the Guthries are a threat to you know your your livelihoods and when manipulating the teenager it's like dude that guy he made out with your girlfriend you know and that's the thing that sets that kid off you know that's yeah that's that's sadly accurate I don't know why Rogue is not covering her hands and arms. Like, I don't mean, you know, I realize that sounds, if you don't know about her powers, that might sound, like, prudish or something, but, like, I feel like it's just prudent to, to cover skin if skin-to-skin -skin contact hurts people, but, you know, just... And, and later in the episode, she, like, touches Remy's face... Uh, seemingly also without or wait was she touching the part that's covered by that black part of his skin? I guess maybe so anyway um, I can I, I wonder if it was like a, an animation goof and yeah you know I, I like you know gambit points out oh come on this is way too easy either you know I guess I'm being set up oh crap you know <laughs> just yeah and I did like seeing Cannonball scare the, the kids who were, were bullying him, you know. He didn't hurt them, he just scared them. And Xavier put people to sleep faster than an economics lecture. That was quite a good, you know, and he does point out, you know, he doesn't like to use it, but when, when needs must. 
and 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 Sam Guthrie's father, I forget his name, points out, you know, fear has completely destroyed, you know, you you know me, you know my family, you've known Sam since he was a child, you know. Let's see. And and then sadly he sends, you know, he does fear the X-Men. Uh, very, very cool when, you know, Sam manages to get out of, you know, away from the, the gas, and the shock troopers and Unit 1 follow, and, yeah, some really great action destroying these robots, and I like the, the detail that Unit 1, you know, he's, you know, classic trope of deploy the, the biological, you know, the biologically enhanced person and someone's like but sir they're not ready to you know just we've seen it a million times before always fun to see it but but yeah um you know unit one like yeah straight up he was not ready he falls over immediately and you know re reverts to to completely human form and i feel like there's definitely that has that not that exact thing, but you know the military will sometimes completely over. You know they'll they'll do something that is not necessary. And yeah, the episode ends with the the Guthrie family actually having to move because of of this, even though they didn't do anything wrong. Um, I think that might be what I have to say about these two episodes. I guess I could briefly talk, you know, so, yeah, for sure, Season 5 has, you know, some, some redesigns of characters and slightly different animation. It doesn't really bother me too much, though I can understand, you know, if other people thought it was really, really off-putting. I think that might be... Um, right, actually, yes, uh, so the whole thing with Cannonball, you know, it really does well at criticizing the aggressive attempts at, like, um, hold on, what's the word, right, a military recruitment of, of young people, and I, th you know, actually, I think... Let's see. I believe Cavernacle has done a really great. I'm well, maybe not. Um, maybe. Hmm. Okay, I'll I'll do my very best then. Um, so yeah. You know the the American military struggles sometimes to to recruit, and it is you know they they get very very deceptive, uh, you know claiming just yeah straight up making false claims to, to you know they they manipulate numbers to make it sound promising, um, and yeah like in recent years you know it, yeah they've been doing it for a while in like movies like the only way that big budget movies will get the the uh, full collaboration of, of the military is if the military gets to like go over the script and change things they don't like um, you know the, the first Avengers movie was famously denied because they did not agree to, to script revisions and yeah, you know, the, they'll sometimes they'll put stuff in, like, they've they've recruited via social media and just yeah, some really really awful stuff. And I'm not sure it had like I think it's it's much much worse now than it was in '97 when this episode first aired. But it was you know, it's been a problem for a long time. You know the so so yeah, I really appreciate them 
criticizing it here and oh cool uh Paige Guthrie was played by Tara Strong who is yeah quite prolific um 638 credits oh that's right she's Miss Minutes among other things you know that's probably the first thing you know primarily to me she's Miss Minutes but you know for a lot of people she's Harley Quinn you know and I do think she's amazing in um, the the what I've seen of, I haven't I don't think I've watched all of Batman the animated series she's great in uh, played a couple of the Arkham games she's great there uh, anyway I think that might be everything that I have for these two episodes so catch you again tomorrow for the last two episodes of this run at least you know thankfully Disney Plus is working you know Marvel is working on making uh, you know a new at least one new season for Disney Plus but yeah the last two episodes will be tomorrow I'll cover tomorrow which is probably also when I'll do the review tomorrow or the day after tomorrow and yeah the last two episodes are Descent and Graduation Day. So until tomorrow, make mine marvel.